give me an excuse to make pasta from scratch and I'll do it because I like making pasta from scratch. I have a recipe and video here on YouTube for making pasta from scratch. To me, it's fun. It's like playing with modeling clay. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make pappardella, which is the second largest of the flat Italian noodles, lasagna being the largest. Pappardella is typically served with a game meat like rabbit. I've done videos on YouTube using pappardella, but I've never served pappardella with rabbit, but I had rabbit in the freezer. So I thought this is a good excuse, a good opportunity to play with pasta dough. So what I'm going to make today is rabbit ragu with pappardella, but you don't have to use pappardella in this dish. You can use pretty near any pasta noodles like wide egg noodles, tagliatella, fettuccine. You can use macaroni like rigatoni. The pasta doesn't really matter in this dish. What's going to matter is the rabbit ragu. So let's make this rabbit ragu with pappardella. I need two and three quarter pounds or about 1.2 kilograms of fresh plum tomatoes that I have to peel. So the easy way to do this is with a small knife, paring knife, score an X through the skin on the bottom of each tomato. That'll make it easier to peel later. So to make these easier to peel, you pierce them with a fork, plunge them into boiling water and hold in there for 20, 30 seconds. What that'll do is it'll just cook the flesh right under the skin and you'll see it start to split sometimes. That's a good indication. This is ready to peel. When I go to peel this, that peel will come right off. So here are my tomatoes. You can see how easily this skin just peels right off. It practically just falls off on its own. You can discard those skins. And I'm going to cut down through the middle, through the equator of the tomato. And I'm going to seed them. And I'm putting the seeds in a strainer here. I have heard that the juice from this, these seeds is very flavorful. But I never see any recipes that say to save it. And the recipe I'm working with today says to do just this. It's the first time I've actually seen it in a recipe. All right, my tomatoes are all seeded. I want to just kind of coarsely chop up my tomatoes here. No need to be fancy. These are all going to get cooked down. The last step is to deal with these seeds. So I'm just pushing with a spatula. If what I know is correct, I mean, I haven't been to culinary school. I'm not a chef. But if what I've heard is correct, the seeds can add bitterness to a sauce, whereas the juice without the seed adds a lot of flavor. So you just push the juice through and you save that. And it gets added to the tomatoes. And now we're ready. The tomatoes are done. I'm heating a large enameled cast iron Dutch oven over medium high heat or moderately high heat. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons. This is cooking olive oil, not extra virgin olive oil. Cooking oil has a higher smoke point. It's better for using my left hand for the salt and the right hand for the meat. I'm seasoning these pieces as I put them in. Anyways, the cooking olive oil is at a higher smoke point, so it's better for browning things. If you brown in um, extra virgin olive oil, it'll burn. So I have all of this rabbit to brown on both sides. I'll season these before I turn them over. I have more meat to go. I've got here between two and a half and three pounds of rabbit. That's 1.1 to 1.4 kilograms. And that's weighed with the bone in. I'm just finishing up the rabbit here. I'm going to transfer this out. This isn't cooked all the way through yet. This is just browned lightly on the outside. 
it'll get cooked thoroughly later on. I'm going to turn my heat off and let this pan cool a little bit. Then I'm going to be adding my stock to deglaze this pan. You want to save all this brown bits. These, This is called a fond. Save that. It's got a lot of flavor in it. I'm going to add some chicken stock now to this pot. Let the pot cool down a little bit so this doesn't boil up. That's homemade chicken stock, by the way, and that's three cups, which is about 710 milliliters. I'm going to bring that to a boil, and then I want to deglaze this pan by scraping up those brown bits. This recipe calls for about a tablespoon of chopped rosemary. So I pulled a little branch off my rosemary bush from my garden. I think I've got enough there. I want to give these a nice chop so I can chop them down fairly fine. I want a nice small mince here. And that looks pretty good right there. Measuring spoon. That's it. Tablespoon. Perfect. So my stock is just now coming to the boil. I scraped up all those brown bits that were in the bottom of that pot. Now I'm going to put my tomatoes in there. And then this is um, one cup roughly, which is about four ounces, 113 grounds, grams rather, of olives. The recipe recommended Niçoise olives. I don't know where I would find Niçoise olives, maybe Whole Foods. These are manzanilla pitted olives that I cut in half. This is a quarter cup, 60 milliliters of vinegar. I'm using a white balsamic vinegar. You can use a white wine vinegar, a red wine vinegar. You could put some red wine in here. You could put some um, vermouth. And then I have to put in my lightly browned rabbit pieces. And then finally, I want to add my rosemary to that. Get that stirred in, push that rabbit down, get it into the liquid. Mm, that's looking good already, doesn't it? Oh, that's looking good. Okay, I'm going to put a cover on this, and I'm going to simmer this over medium-low heat for about an hour to really cook that rabbit well. This has been cooking now, partially covered, for one hour. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I did take a little taste of this sauce for salt, and the sauce is fine. I tend to cook with very little salt anyways. Now I need to transfer my rabbit pieces out of here and then I can start, then I can continue cooking my sauce. I took my rabbit pieces out of this pan and now I brought my heat back up again. I'm going to bring this to a boil. It's just now starting to come to a boil. I'm going to simmer this over low heat for another 30 minutes uncovered to let it thicken. Meanwhile, my rabbit pieces are going to cool because I have to debone those pieces and put the meat back in my sauce. I just turn the heat off under this. That looks really nice. That's thick enough. That'll be fine for my pasta sauce. I have to work with my rabbit and I have one more ingredient to add to that. One of the ingredients that the recipe called for was soprasata, which is a, an Italian sausage. I didn't know where I was going to find that, so I bought instead some prosciutto. And I looked online and they said prosciutto is a good substitute for soppressata. But when I was in Costco, they had a sample pack of different sausages and one of them was soppressata. Now you're going to see it two different ways. Some with two peas, some with one pea. I did go online to see how it was pronounced. The Italian is soprasata. So I'm going to go with one pea. It just seems more effective for me. And I'm going to open this up. I have to dice this up to go into my 
sauce. The recipe, the original recipe calls for six ounces, 170 grams. This is four ounces, which is 113 grams. I think four ounces is plenty in this sauce. I'm just finishing up dicing this. I think I called this a sausage. This is a salami. By the feel of it, by the taste of it, this is a salami. And if you can't find either soppressata or prosciutto, I would say a dry Italian salami would be good enough. That's what it tastes like to me. Next, I have to debone my rabbit pieces. Get all this meat off. This is still warm, but it's not too warm to handle. I should say it's hot, but it's not too hot to handle. And I want to get the meat off and kind of shred the meat up. Put it in a bowl. So it's going to take me a little while to get all this meat off the bones. I'm just finishing up here, deboning this rabbit. This has been an amusing exercise because I've deboned so many chickens. I know where all the meat is, but I don't debone rabbits. So it's like I have to explore as I go along to figure out where all the meat is. And you want to break it up and shred it up so that it's in small pieces. It'll kind of blend into the sauce a little bit. You don't want it to be all ground up like ground beef. I brought the heat back up on my sauce after I stirred in that salami. I'm going to add the rabbit meat that I just shredded. And I figured from that rabbit by the pieces that I had, it was probably enough from two whole, two whole rabbits. I think I mentioned from the beginning that it was about two and a half to three pounds of rabbit meat, 1.1 to 1.4 kilograms. I'm going to bring the heat up onto this till it comes to a simmer, and then I'm going to simmer this for another 10 minutes. I may need to add a little bit of water to that now. I have two pieces of pasta dough here that I made last night. Each of these is one egg plus enough flour to make a dough. I'm going to use only one of these. Two of these will feed six people. The sauce that I'm making is going to feed six to eight. All right, I'm ready to start rolling here. Just going to flour that lightly before I put it through my pasta machine. As I mentioned at the outset, you don't need to make your own pasta from scratch. You can buy a lot of the store-bought dry noodles. Just cook them according to package directions. I enjoy making my own pasta. And that'll make a nice long sheet of pasta dough that I can then cut up to make my pappardella. Okay, to cut this up, I think I'm going to work with three lengths here. I'm using a fluted cutter. Like so. And then according to my one of my encyclopedias, my pasta encyclopedia, Papadella, the size varies according to the region of Italy. These scraps, by the way, you can cut these up, freeze them, and save them for soup. So, I don't want them too big. I'm going to cut them like so. And then I can trim these to get rid of those odd edges. And that is pappadella. It's rather a large pasta, large flat pasta. Let me take a little bit more off of that one. So that's what I would call pappadella, right there. I have the rest of this to cut up. Meanwhile, I've got water coming to a boil on the stove. And as soon as it's boiling, I can start cooking my pasta. This will cook in like a minute because it's fresh, raw pasta rather than dry pasta, which depending upon package directions, can cook in eight to 12 minutes. I am ready now to plate. 
my papadella. Beautifully cooked. I dress that with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. This is a lot of pasta. A lot. I mean, that's enough really for three people right there, but it looks good when the bowl is full. And then taking the lid off my sauce, I'll put some of my rabbit ragu on top. There it is. I'm not someone who puts cheese on everything, but what I do like to do, I like to sometimes dress it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, just drops, to give it a shine. Rabbit ragu with pappadella. So there it is. The first time I've made pappadella with rabbit. I want to taste my rabbit sauce here. A little bit of my olive. That is so good. <laughs> oh, that is good. And I was thinking this would be a good way of using up leftover turkey. This being November, Thanksgiving is coming. You could make a sauce. Motorcycle going by. You could make a sauce with your turkey meat just like this, serve it over pasta. It's a way of using up some leftover turkey meat. Pasta is al dente. Perfect. A couple of things I wanted to mention. You saw me use homemade chicken stock. The chicken broth they sell in the store is good enough. Try to buy something low sodium so you don't have too much salt once it's concentrated. Now that's a truck going by. <laughs> this really is a trailer park, folks. And you saw me using fresh tomatoes, but there are good canned tomatoes that you can use. So you don't have to use the ingredients I used. There's a lot of substitutions you can do here. So excuse me, but I'm going to go enjoy my rabbit ragu with papadella. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, Visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.